Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight's invocation is being offered by Council Member Emily Evans. Let us pray. Father, Mother God, thank you for your presence during the hard and mean days, for then we have you to lean upon. Thank you for your presence during the bright and sunny days, for then we can share that which we have with those who have less. And thank you for your presence during the holy days, for then we are able to celebrate you and our families and our friends. For those who have no voice, we ask you to speak. For those who feel unworthy, we ask you to put your love out in waterfalls of tenderness. For those who live in pain, we ask you to bathe them in the river of your healing. For those who are lonely, we ask you to keep them company. For those who are depressed, we ask you to shower upon them the light of hope. Dear Creator, you, the borderless sea of substance, we ask you to give to all the world that which we need most, peace. Amen. Without objection, we'll suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of the members present throughout the evening. Is there approval, a motion for the approval of the minutes of our August 5th meeting? We have a motion and a second. Without objection, the minutes will stand approved as written. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? There are no messages from the mayor. Thank you. I just want to make one quick announcement. Our next council meeting will be September the 9th, uh, not Labor Day week. Uh, so we'll be meeting on the 9th and the 16th. We're now at the point for elections uh, for President Pro Tem. Are there any nominations? Councilmember Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just wanted to nominate Councilman Linnell Matthews for Pro Tem. Linnell is a consummate professional, did a wonderful job as our budget chair, as we all remember. Uh, very organized, always on time when he was our budget chair, and uh, I'd like to submit him as he would make a wonderful pro tem. Uh, thank you very much. Councilman Matthews, do you wish to speak? Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor, and thank you, Councilman Davis, for your nomination. Uh, I would just like to represent this council in the absence of our, our chair, our vice mayor, uh, if she were to be absent for any, any reason, uh, to make sure that we do continue to run efficient, effective meetings. We continue to use our committee process as it has been established uh, by, by our vice mayor, and that we have someone in the chair that will be reasonable and considerate of everyone in this body and continue to uphold the integrity of this body. So I will ask for your consideration tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Councilmember Bennett. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I rise in nomination of my colleague, Councilman Phil Claiborne. Uh, I have worked with Councilman Claiborne for the last seven years, and we don't always agree on all the issues, but he has always been good to work with. He's compassionate. He works with his community, and I feel that he's a respected member of his council district in this group. He currently serves as chair of the Personnel, Public Information, and Human Resources Committee. He has also served us on Planning, Zoning, and the Historic Committee, and as you know, with that, that gives him a seat on our Planning Commission during that tenure. And I feel like he did a really good job representing my council district during that time. He currently is representative on the domestic assault death review team, which is quite impressive on his resume. Uh, he is retired from the Metro schools for 31 years. He also spent 31 years in the Tennessee Army National Guard and has a very respectable career. 
In our discussions, he has shared with me that he is kind of winding up his political career. And maybe it's on his bucket list. I'm not really sure if he's starting that now. But uh, he would like to serve in this position, not as a move up, but as a completion to a successful council career and his political career. And I just would ask for your vote for Councilman Phil Claiborne. Councilman Claiborne. Thank you, Vice Mayor, and uh, thank you, Council Lady Bennett, for your nomination. Uh, I'll be very brief. Um, most of you uh, know where I stand as a councilman uh, in this body for the last two terms. I've tried to always uh, conduct uh, myself and our business in a way that is brings honor to this body and uh, to represent our constituency in a way that is respectful and um, in honoring. As Council Lady Bennett said, uh, I'm not seeking this role as a stepping stone to any other position. I don't have any political aspirations beyond next uh, August when I leave. I'm going home, spend more time with my wife. Uh, we're going to travel some. And uh, as many of you know, uh, I spent 31 years as an art teacher. And for the last uh, eight or nine years, I've had very little time to devote to my artwork. So I'm going to become the, the, uh, the second fill in the art world in the Nashville area. <laughs> So uh, I, um, I would just uh, ask you uh, uh, to uh, support me in this. As Council Lady Bennett said, um, I'm, I look at this as a great honor to, uh, to top off and finish eight years of service to, uh, to the Donaldson, Two Rivers, Pennington, Ben area, and to the Nashville community. And so I would, um, I would uh, ask you for your support. Your vote is important. and. Um, so I, I thank you for those, uh, those considerations. Any other nominations? Seeing none, this will be a machine vote. Uh, Councilman Matthews uh, will be your green button. Councilman Claiborne will be your red button. Matthews is green, Claiborne is red. Please cast your vote. Madam Clerk. I have 19 for Matthews, 18 for Claiborne, no abstentions. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, Councilman Matthews. <laughs> Presentation, Councilmember Hunt. Do we need to wait? Traffic. They're sitting in traffic. They're sitting, in, well, they're playing in traffic. <laughs> we'll come back to it. Thank you. Okay. Council Member Barry. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, tonight we have several reappointments and appointments. The Rules and Confirmations Committee considered the following for the Agricultural Extension Board. The reappointment of Ms. Mona Crabtree, the reappointment of Ms. Mary Hurt, the reappointment of Dr. Thelma Sanders Hunter, and for the Farmers Market Board, we considered the first-time appointment of Mr. Brian Copeland. For the Social Services Commission, the first-time appointment of Ms. Nikita Jones, and for the Tourism and Convention Commission, the first-time appointment of Ms. Dawn Southworth. We voted 6-4, zero against. With that, I move approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. When I call your name, please stand and remain standing. Mona Crabtree, Mary Hurt, Thelma Sanders Hunter, Brian Copeland, Nikita Jones, and Dawn Southworth. On behalf of the entire Metropolitan Council, thank you for your willingness to serve our great city and to volunteer your time and your expertise. Thank you very much. We will move on to resolutions on public hearing. 
the first one is RS 2014-1192, exempts Union Common located at 1929 Broadway from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move to open the public hearing. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in support wish to speak? The public hearing is closed. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move for approval. I need one committee report. Council oh, Member Perdue. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, beer regulated beverages passed is 4 0. Thank you, sir. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move for approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Sir. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We are now at resolutions on the consent agenda. I will read them and then you can tell me if any need to be pulled. Um, those on the consent agenda are RS 1109, 1156, 1193, 1195, 1196, 1197, 1198, 99, 1200, 1201, 1202, and 1203. Um, 1109 approves the application fee for contextual overlay district application. 1156 exempts venue 109 located at 109 Cood Lane from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. 1193 authorizes the mayor to submit a fourth amendment to the action plan for community development block grant disaster recovery funds designated for recovery needs as a result of the May 2010 floods. 1195 approves the grant from the Greater Nashville Regional Council to Metro Social Services Commission for meal delivery services. 1196 approves the grant from the State Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health for bioterrorism preparedness services. 1197 approves a grant from the State Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to provide care coordination services for the Children's Special Services Program. 1198 approves an agreement between the Metro Board of Health and Belmont University to provide a worksite point of delivery for licensed medical employees and other licensed medical professionals specified by Belmont University in the event of a public health emergency. 1199 approves a grant from the State Department of Labor and Workforce Development to the Nashville Career Advancement Center to prepare dislocated workers for re-entry into the labor force and to offer training for those facing barriers to productive employment. 2000 approves a grant from the State Department of Labor and Workforce Development to the Nashville Career Advancement Center to prepare adults for re-entry into the labor force. 1201 approves an application for a state grant to the Nashville Public Library to purchase tablet computers. 1202 authorizes ACME Nashville LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 101 Broadway. And 1203 authorizes ING Elliston Inc. to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 2110 Elliston Place. Do any of these need to be pulled? Council Member Purdue. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to pull 1156, please. Okay, any others? Councilmember Evans. I don't really need to pull it, but I need to be recorded as an abstention on 1193. Thank you, so noted. Any others? Oh, your button's not working tonight? No. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. We disconnected it. That's okay, I have a loud voice. <laughs> I just want to abstain too. <laughs> so noted. Which one was it? Okay, we're going to pull 1193 off. So we have 1156, 1193 that have been pulled from the consent agenda. Is there a motion for um, 
No, I need committee reports. I'm sorry. Um, Council Member Stein. On 1109, 1193, 11, I'm sorry, that's been pulled, I apologize. 1195, 1196, 1197, 1199, 1200, and 1201, budget and finance unanimously approved. Council Member Langster. Thank you, um, Madam Vice Mayor. Federal Grants Review Committee approved 740 against the pass. Okay, Council Member Maynard. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Health Hospitals and Social Services approved 1195, 1196, 1197, 1198, and also 1204, 540 against. Thank you, Council Member Tiger. Parks and Recreation approved 1201, three and zero. Council Member Westerholm. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Personnel, Public Information, Human Relations, and Housing approved RS 2014 1199 and 2014 1200 640 against. Council Member Hunt. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Planning, Zoning, and Historic Committee uh, approved 1109 840 against. Council Member Dominic. <coughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. On BL 2000 or RS 2014 1202 and 1203, the Public Works Committee approved unanimously. Councilmember Barry. Thank you, Vice Mayor. With all committee reports in, I move approval. We have a motion and a second for the consent agenda. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Now we'll go back to the ones that are not on the consent agenda. I believe the first one is RS 2014-1156. Exempts venue 109 located at 109 Cood Lane from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Council Member Purdue. Uh, yes, ma'am. I would like to uh, indefinitely defer this bill with a short explanation. We have a motion and a second for indefinite deferral. Council Member Purdue. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, two meetings ago, we postponed this to work it out with uh, the neighborhood out there, parking situation and what have you. And it, it seems like that we are unable to find a dedicated parking that's needed for that. So at this time, I renew my motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second for indefinite deferral. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Next is 1193, authorizes the mayor to submit a fourth amendment to the action plan for community development block grant disaster recovery funds designated for recovery needs as a result of the May 2010 floods. Council Member Stein. Committee report. Council Member Langster. I apologize. Which one, Vice 1193. 1193. Um, Federal Grants Re Review Committee approved 740 against. Thank you, Council Member Stein. Budget approved 849 against. I move approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Oh, I'm so we will need a machine vote because we have two abstentions. I apologize. Madam Clerk, would you close the machine and tally the vote? I have 34 yes, zero no, two abstentions. Okay. Uh, the motion passes. Next is BL 2014-1194, accepts a donation of a Tennessee walking horse named Pushing Cash for Dollar, also known as Cash, to the Metro Police Department. Council Member Stein. Committee report. Um, Council Member Purdue. Uh, well, public safety voted 4 0 to withdraw the bill. Thank you. Council Member Stein. Budget and Finance voted 8 4, none against, to withdraw. Um, I would move to withdraw. Um, this request is at the request of the police department. It's with great sorrow that I make this request. 
We, we have a motion and a second. Councilman Holloman, did you wish to speak? Your button actually did light up. I just assumed it worked. Okay, it worked. <laughs> okay, Could all in favor forward? of the withdrawal, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Um, we have two others that are not on the consent agenda. First is RS 2014-1186 recognizes Ken Jakes for his service to the community. Councilmember Tiger. Thank you, Madam Chair. Committee report. Councilmember Barry. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. The Rules and Confirmations Committee had no recommendation. Thank you, Councilmember Tiger. Two for, two against, two not voting. Two, two, two. Okay. Councilmember Tiger. I would move approval with a brief explanation. We have a motion and a second. Councilman. Thank you. Um, I don't know where to begin. Uh, you know, when an individual has been an opponent of yours in, a, in an election, sometimes you form opinions and you have different uh, thoughts about a person. But uh, occasionally, even someone that you've been opposed to on different issues will do something extraordinary in the community that de deserves recognition. Um, I happened to be standing near Mr. Jakes when someone walked by a couple, three months ago representing the school and asked for a donation of some produce and fruit for a fundraising event for that school. And he basically said, sure, didn't ask how much, didn't ask what the obligation was, didn't ask what it was going to cost him, just said, give me a call, let me know what you need. Um, there was an article in the paper from a nonprofit organization. This one happened to be in Murfreesboro, but it services citizens all over Middle Tennessee, where Mr. Jakes had arranged for a donation of a tractor trailer truckload of fruit and vegetables to that organization, and they had since distributed that materials to over 20,000 deserving citizens in our community. So it got me to thinking that sometimes even when you don't agree with the person politically or individually on all the issues, that they occasionally deserve thanks for their charitable side. And as I researched this, I found out that Mr. Jakes had uh, regularly donated for the last 20 plus years to the Metro Retirees Luncheon. Uh, as far as I can tell, no school, civic organization, or others have, has ever received a no if it was at all possible from him. And so I thought, just based on the charitable efforts of this individual for fresh fruit and produce, which is one of the hardest things that our food banks uh, struggle to put in baskets for our citizens, that he deserved thanks. I just got an email from uh, a pastor who represents a nonprofit organization called Layman Lessons Church to feed the hungry in Middle Tennessee. And just f for information, within the last week, Kenny Jakes arranged for a tractor trailer load of fresh lettuce and fruit to be donated to the ministries of this church, representing over $10,000 worth of fruit and lettuce at a time when hundreds of thousands, uh, including hundreds and thousands of pounds of fresh prudos so far this year and, and well into the years past. So I just think occasionally uh, you set aside your differences and you say to someone, thank you for your charitable efforts in the community. Council Member Dominey. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I rise in support of this. Uh, Ken Jakes, through Layman Lessons in particular, has donated uh, food to food pantries serving the poor and the needy families across southeast Nashville. He's donated to, as he, Councilman Tiger pointed out, the retirees' luncheon. He's provided food to those that we want to help. And I, for one, am proud to stand up and support him and recognize that. And I would do that for somebody else that may be on the opposite side of the political spectrum for me if he's doing what's right. And we would want more people doing that in our community to help in our poor and our needy. And I say yes, and I support him, and I support the resolution. And I ask you to do the same. Councilmember Johnson. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor Neighbors, uh, members of the council. I also rise in support of this legislation. Um, I just want to say thank you to Ken Jakes for uh, all of the, the years of donations of fruit and vegetables that he's given to the annual uh, egg hunt that we have in Southeast Davidson County. He's also uh, provided his refrigerated trucks free of charge for many community events. Um, from the health fair that we had in front of the Kmart parking lot to the Night Out Against Crime event to the egg hunt, and I can name more. He has helped out Southeast Davidson County on many occasions and never hesitated to provide free produce for the residents in our area. So I have to stand in support of just saying thank you to him. Whether there are any differences that we may have, uh, I do commend him on his efforts to uh, help out in Southeast Davidson County. Thank you. Councilmember Duvall. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, too, want to join uh, Ken in the resolution in support of Ken Jakes. I'm proud of calling my friend. I'm proud to say that I'm able to stand here and support him and being recognized for what he's done for all over Davidson County. It's been a tremendous outpouring, and as it's been stated a number of times, trucks and fruit and vegetables, and he's given it willingly no strings attached. Uh, the man is absolutely a jewel to this community and I hope that uh, you will join me in recognizing him. Thank you, Madam Chair. Council Member Tenpenny. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I stand uh, in support of this also. Uh, Mr. Jakes, uh, I've personally been with him when uh, phone calls have come in and uh, just just the giving of, that this man has done uh, just to the not only Nashville but but other communities also um, it takes a it takes a good person like that to be able to to give and stick his hand out and and uh, be able to 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 give to the needy and to, to, to help folks so uh, I stand in support of mr. Ken Jakes he's a really good man and I think he deserves the recognition thank you thank you uh, this will be a machine vote Yes, no, or abstain. Or leave the room. <laughs> Madam Clerk, please close the machine and tally the vote. I have 18 for, I'm sorry, 18 for, four against, and 14 abstentions. Motion passes. We're now at RS 2014-1204, recognizes September as National, in National Infant Mortality Awareness Month and declaring September 9, 2014 as Safe Sleep Awareness Day in Davidson County. Councilmember Maynard. <laughs> Councilmember Maynard. Pardon me, was it? 1204. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I was still contemplating my latest vote. Uh, RS 2012-1204, Health, Hospitals, and Social Services, approved 540 against. As substituted. As substituted. Okay. The motion is for yeah. approval of the substitute. I move for it as a substitute. Is there a second? second? Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Substitute passes. Thank Council you, Vice Mayor. Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move as substituted. We have a motion and a second on the bill as substituted. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Councilman Hunt, um, I think we're ready for your presentation.
Councilman Hunt. Thank you, <clears throat> Vice Mayor. This is a resolution recognizing a recent award and accolades received by the Nashville International Airport. One of the things that I came to mind on this particular uh, resolution, I bumped into a group of people last week that was here and they was talking about what a good airport we had and it was comparing this airport with a lot of airports around the country. And I mean, they just gave it uh, lots of accolades. And then I found out that we had our 10 million passengers marking a record number of 10.3 passengers. We also, the National International Airport and the John C. Toon Airport contributed more than $3.5 billion in the total economy impact to the national community and in the Tennessee economy and nearly 30 and nearly 38,000 jobs. And the, uh, the airport strive to meet the air services demand of this booming city. And the new nonstop key markets, including Boston, Dallas, Love Field, Pittsburgh, uh, Trenton, and more service into the Los Angeles, Washington, D.C. community. And whereas the <clears throat> Bearfield National Airport has been awarded numerous awards and accolades, such as the Airport Revenue News Airport, the best airport customer service, Travel and Leisure Reading ranked BNA number eight for American Best in 2013. BNA named one of the seven, named one of seven the world most entertaining airports. The Metro National Airports and named the 2012 Excellent Award winner in an annual Excellent in Tennessee Recognition Program. The airport is the first airport in the U.S. to earn this award as its state highest levels and one of only two organizations in Tennessee that was recognized with this award. The Huffington Post also named BNA uh, number six. Check number six, BNA received the highest honor in airport concessions, Airport Council International, Business Review, also ranked uh, BNA number 10 among the top 10 airports. Uh, PC World named the BNA number 13 among the best 20 airports. It was also recognized for the 2014 commercial project for the year of the airfield project by American Association of Airports Executives. And also they won the Middle Tennessee Energy Award multiple facility category from the Association of Energy Engineers. And of course, the Airport Arts at the Airport Partnership Program received the 2012 winner of the Arts and Business Council of the Greater National Bowles Award. So the airport has been really busy and I just wanted to help recognize uh, th what they do for Nashville and also what this council does for the airport as well as the city of Nashville to make it the number one airport in Davidson County. And I'd like to present this to you. Well, thank you, Councilman Hunt and Councilman Stites, and thank the entire Metro Council uh, for your support, and especially for this recognition tonight. Um, we are very pleased and proud to serve this great community, and the airport is growing very rapidly, as you know. And the only way we are able to deliver the kind of service that we provide and keep it safe and secure and provide the most outstanding customer service in the country, we believe, which we call the Nashville Airports Experience, uh, is with our dedicated staff. And we have a, several staff with us tonight. I want to recognize Emily Richard, who slipped over there, Bob Watson, and Aaron Evans. And Aaron really is um, one of the people that is so key to our operation. He's the director of operations. He's been with the airport authority for, since 1980. And he not only manages all of the operations, making sure the airlines are coming in flowing properly, but he also handles the parking. 
So don't blame him for the parking rates. Actually, we have very good rates, but uh, I'm very impressed with uh, all the accolades. I'm not easily impressed, uh, but thank you for reciting those. And um, we're not we're not in it for the awards, but we're in it for really how we could serve this community and help it grow and be the economic engine that, that the airport is. So I thank you very much uh, for this recognition. And on behalf of the Board of Commissioners and the entire staff of the Metropolitan Airport Authority, thank you. We are now at bills on introduction and first reading. Are there any that need to be pulled? Councilmember Langster. Thank you, Madam, Madam Vice Mayor Neighbors. Since ordinance number BL2014-860 on first reading pertains to a street located entirely, entirely in my District 21, and I am not a co-sponsor of the ordinance, I am invoking Rule 8 for the ordinance to be deferred automatically for one meeting. Thank you. So noted. Any others that need to be pulled? Is there a motion for all other bills on introduction and first reading? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We're now at bills on second reading. The first one is BL 2014-838. Makes applicable the provisions of the Broadway Historic Preservation Overlay District to various properties located along Broadway 2nd Avenue South and 3rd Avenue South. Council Member Gilmore. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. Eight three eight. Okay. Planning Zone and Historic Committee approve this bill eight four zero against. Thank you, Councilmember Gilmore. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I move to approve uh, with a brief explanation. Have a motion and a second, Councilmember. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor, neighbors, and fellow council members. I'd appreciate your support for this ordinance. A number of stakeholders, including property owners, business owners, and residents, have been working towards a shared vision for Broadway. Uh, because of this bill and we're able to move forward today, we will no longer need the cultural heritage, uh, which I will defer later on tonight. So I would appreciate your support for this. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-841 amends the Metro Code pertaining to the minimum dis size of outdoor animal enclosures. Council Member Bennett. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move the substitute, please. Have a motion Sorry. and a second. Any discussion on the substitute? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Substitute passes. I would like to move as substituted, please. Have a motion Sorry. and a second. Councilman Tiger, you wish to speak? Yes, ma'am. After reading Councilman Stein's wife's comments about him being in the doghouse all the time, does this bill pertain to him at no, all? No, sir. Thank you. No. Um, any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 846 amends the Metro Code pertaining to the administration of the Community Garden Grant Program. Councilmember Tiger. Committee report, please. Councilmember Stein. Grudgingly, <laughs> I will report that the Budget Committee approved this 10 4 and none against. Parks. Council Parks approved 4 and 0, and I move approval. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-847 amends the Metro Code to require contracts for government relations and lobbying services to be submitted to the Metro Council. Councilmember Garrett. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Committee report, please, ma'am. Councilmember uh, Barry. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Rules and Committee uh, Confirmations Committee voted 6 4, 0 against. Councilmember Garrett. I would move for approval with just a brief explanation. 
We have a motion and a second. Uh, over the, this does not go into effect till 2017 for the next council. The uh, our Bill Phillips and Anna Windrow are our lobbyists uh, now, and instead of, uh, I guess you would say this has been requested in 2004 and 2011 through a resolution that there be contact between the lobbyist and Metro Council. This re would require that by being an ordinance with the next RFP that would go out for 2017 would require the uh, the lobbyist at that time to have contact with the council once a week during the session and uh, once a month while they're not in session. And it will be something new and something uh, that some of you will hopefully be here and and, uh, and have more contact with what goes on on the Hill, especially when it affects uh, metropolitan government. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Bill 2014-848 authorizes the Metro Health and Educational Facilities Board to negotiate an agreement for the payments in lieu of taxes for the benefit of HCA. Council Member Stein. Budget and finance approved 10-4, none against. I move approval. We have a motion second. and a second. second. Seeing no discussion, all in favor please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-849 names the Victim Resource Center at the Ben West Building in honor of Jean Crow. Council Member Berry. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report. The Rules Committee voted 6-4-0 against. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. We have a motion and a second. Council Member Berry. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. It's my great honor tonight to ask all of you to vote to name the new Victim Resource Center at the Ben West Building in honor of Jean Crow. Jean is not with us tonight, but I do hope that she's watching at home. For those of you who don't know her, let me just take a moment to tell you about her. For the last several years, through her work in the Nashville Office of the Legal Aid Society of Middle Tennessee, she has provided legal representation to the less fortunate in Davidson County, and she especially represents low-income domestic violence victims in divorce and other civil proceedings. She is a tireless advocate for all of those issues that her clients face, including protection from further violence, needs for housing, finding work, and access to health care. She's earned a reputation as a law expert, and she has been instrumental in crafting family law legislation in the state and in this nation. She's contributed to the legislative efforts to pr protect domestic violence victims, and she's also saved many for, um, with her advocacy. She was involved both in the founding of the Domestic Violence Death Review Team and the Nashville Coalition Against Domestic Violence, and she ultimately chaired both of those groups. In 2013, she received the Ashley T. Wilshire Public Service Attorney of the Year Award. The new Victim Resource Center, along with Davidson County's first ever domestic violence court, is going to provide a, a central location for many resources for domestic violence victims. And when they go through the Davidson County court system, the resource center will be there for them. And this is really critical as we move to continue the cycle of abuse. Because we all know that domestic violence strikes all races, all ethnicities, it crosses gender and socioeconomic classes. Statewide, we have more than 50% of all crimes against persons that are related to domestic violence, and 65% of those women are, are victims are women. The police department received more than 26,000 reports of domestic violence in 2013, and that's one every 20 minutes. So it's only fitting that we go ahead and name the Victim Resource Center after Jean Crow. She's devoted her legal career to stopping the cycle of domestic violence because she knows that when you help one victim, you're not just helping her, you're helping her family for generations to come. And with that, I move approval. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-850 changes the name of Trinity Hills Parkway to Woodland Starway. Councilmember Harrison. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, committee report and traffic and parking voted to approve 3-4 and 0 against. Councilmember Dominey. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public Works Committee approved 850 unanimously. Councilmember Hunt. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public, I mean, ooh, um, planning, zoning, and um, historical approved 850-80-840 against. Councilman. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. 
BL 2014 851 abandons 500 linear feet of 30 inch combination sewer main and 720 linear feet of 6 inch water main along 4th Avenue North and abandons 390 linear feet of 6 inch water main along Jackson Court for various properties located between Harrison and Jackson Street. Council Member Gilmore. Committee reports. Council Member Dominey. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public Works Committee approved 851 74 and 0 against. Council Member Hunt. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Plan and Zoning Historic Committee uh, voted 840 against. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 852 abandons a portion of 4th Avenue North right of way and easement. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Member Dominey. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public Works Committee approved unanimously, 740 against. Thank you, Council Member Harrison. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Traffic and Park and approved 340 against. Council Member Hunt. Planning and Zoning Historic Committee voted 840 against. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you. Move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-770 amends the Metro Code pertaining to two family dwellings. Council Member Hunt. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Bill 770 uh, was deferred one meeting until 9-9-14, September 9th. Okay. Your motion is to defer? Motion is to defer. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of deferral, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Next is BL 2014-771, amends the Metro Code to create a contextual overlay district. Council Member Hunt. Move for approval, please. We have a motion With and a brief explanation. Councilman Hunt. We got a substitute that we need to move. Uh, do you have a committee report for the substitute? Yes. The committee report is 840 against. And we have a motion and a second on the substitute. Councilman Garrett, do you wish to speak on the substitute? Yeah, I'd just like the explanation of the substitute, please. Mr. Cooper. Do you want to do that? The substitute um, makes several changes to the to bill to the bill or or really additions, uh, clarifications. It clarifies that if 125 percent of the average height of the abutting structures is less than 27 feet, then you could still have a maximum height of one and a half stories within the 27 feet. Um, to clarify that it would not be limited to one story. Uh, it changes the way the height is to be measured. Uh, it is now to be measured from grade or from the top of the foundation, not to exceed three feet above grade. Uh, it also clarifies that the um, BZA can grant variances if the uh, circumstances warrant. Council Member Glover. Because there's been, a, thank you, Vice Mayor. Because there's been a lot of confusion around this. When was the uh, substitute, and when was the amendment actually done, Mr. Cooper? I don't know when it was actually prepared. I think it was distributed Friday afternoon, after or this past Friday afternoon. So then the question from the vice mayor was, has this been discussed in committee? And I don't think it has been. Yeah, I think it was referenced in committee. The committee had already considered the bill so the, the the substitute did not need to go back to the committee okay, yeah, it already I, I, had a recommendation prior to the substitute and i think that's where we have a lot of confusion on this because the committee did it didn't get it back and it was kind of my understanding we would be getting it back other discussion no i moved councilman glover 
I'm just asking, can we bring it back to committee? So I don't know what's required of that. Can we defer it? Uh, one meeting to bring it back to committee for the discussion. He would not, have to move to defer uh, and to re-refer it back to committee. All right, then I will move to defer one meeting and re-refer back to committee. We have a motion and a second. Councilman Hunt. I would move that we table it. We have a motion and a second. Councilman Hunt. We've had a lot of time on this particular bill. Uh, they had been after meetings after meetings. We did a meeting um, that I happened to be in uh, with planning, and that was a meeting where they had some developers in it. They had a lawyer in it. So it was a lot of people in there in that particular meeting that got the uh, agreement. And as far as the meetings Friday, last Friday, there was a meeting that I had promised the residents that as soon as they come up with an agreed res uh, amendment, that I would meet with them and tell them what it was. It was not a public hearing. I told them that. Some people showed up anyway, but that was fine. It was an open meeting, and we, at that time, gave the residents an opportunity to look at the amendments, and that's when the amended amendments amendments went out. I want to say that uh, I talked to a lot of people. This stack of papers here, uh, email, represent people all over this city. And I still got another stack at home equal to this, that they wanted Bill 770 and 771 passed. So that's how we got to where we were. And I do know they had several meetings. Uh, planning met with Gaynard. Planning met with a lot of different other groups, in which I don't know exactly what they all was. But I do know there have been tons of meetings. OK, now. I've been in this business long enough to know, to know that any time you have a meeting, there's always going to be somebody said, I didn't get the memo. We can't help that. I can't help it. All I know is we had a lot of meetings with a lot of key people. So I'd like to table that motion. Councilman Glover. And yes, I got notification, I think it was either Wednesday or Thursday of the meeting at one, uh, Friday afternoon at 1.30. And it's difficult for those of us who work to, to make that change in our schedules, Vice Mayor. So with that, that's why I'm asking for a deferral. Uh, I think it only makes sense that we're allowed to bring it back into the committee truly vet it to where we truly understand it, where we can answer our constituents uh, questions. We all got a ton of emails. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I believe that this is where uh, a lot of people in gov or a lot of people uh, distrust the government because they feel like th this is being crammed down their throats. And so with that being in mind, I would ask that we do defer it. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We're back on the motion to table. It will be a machine vote. We're voting to table the motion to defer and re-refer. If you want to table that motion, vote yes. And if you don't want to table that motion, vote no. I need everyone voting, please. Madam Clerk, please close the machine and tally the vote. I have 24 for, 13 against, 3 abstentions. I'm sorry, 21 for, I'm sorry. 21 yes, 13 against, 3 abstentions. The motion to table, the motion to defer passes. We're back to the original motion. Uh, or we're back to the motion to approve the substitute. I move to approve the substitute. Councilmember Barry. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I did actually, we have had lots of emails on this, and we have had, I think the, the sponsor has had a lot of conversations. My question, though, is this is voluntary. Is that correct? Nobody has to do this unless a neighborhood gets together and decides that this is something they want. So if we pass this tonight, it doesn't change anything until a neighborhood uses this as a tool to help them with conservation if that's what they want. Is that right? Well, ultimately, it would be the, the district council member submitting the application, um, hopefully working with the neighborhood, but, but correct. The, 
adopting this is adopting the tool that could be used in the future if the council so chose. And to use that tool would require going through the zoning process, public hearing at planning commission, public hearing at council, and three readings. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. Council Member Allen. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to ask if Mr. Bernhardt could give us, I, I think you'd be the person to ask this, a little bit of clarification on how these amendments came about. I believe that they were part of a conversation between members of the development community and the, and the planning staff. Is that correct? That is correct. The four amendments or clarifications are all uh, clarifications that were presented through the series of meetings that uh, Councilman Hunt talked about from the developer com uh, development community. Council Member Duvall. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Cooper, just a question. Can we not, as sitting district council members, do exactly what this bill does with a, an SP right now? It would be more difficult with an SP to do it for an entire neighborhood. It could be done through the urban design overlay UDO process. But with that said, if we brought it forward, it definitely would be our community would be with it. And what I'm alluding this to is if you remember a few years ago, uh, we had a number of meetings in the Hermitage area where we rezoned over 3,000 acres to, to RS80. I, that wasn't an SP, but it could have been done. And that would be something that I would see this type of zoning being done for a district councilman. I just don't understand why we need this if we already have the authority to do it. Well, I think the difference between this and a UDO is each UDO has its own design standards that are uh, developed by the planning department working with the council member and the neighborhood. This would be a set of uniform standards that if a, a neighborhood and a district council member chose to pursue that route, um, what is included within the overlay provisions is what would apply. There wouldn't be any uh, specific tailoring it to a particular neighborhood. Um, so that means it would be quicker and, and more cost effective to go that route. But um, a UDO would give a greater opportunity for variant variation. On Thank that. you, sir. Councilman Holloman. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. I think it's a question for Mr. Bernhardt. Uh, I know from our earlier discussions in the public hearing that how these were measured at grade was one of the major issues to the developers. Um, it, can you describe for us if there is an outstanding issue? I understand the development community doesn't speak with unanimity, but is there an outstanding issue where there's strong disagreement from a substantial number of developers? Uh, as Mr. Cooper said, there was a clear, the original uh, ordinance measured the height from grade. Uh, there were comments made and at the request of uh, the developers it was added that uh, it would be measured at grade up to three percent uh, three feet so it adds three feet of additional height uh, to allow for the foundation okay so is that something that there's still disagreement about I'm just trying to figure out what the what the bulk of the concern is that's left to the extent there is any I don't think there's any concern with that issue. I'm not aware of concern with that issue. Okay. Um, Is it more of just a conceptual objection then? Correct. Okay. We're now back on the motion to, on the substitute. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Substitute passes. Councilman Hunt. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just want to say this bill is like um, your spare in your car. If you don't have a flat, you never have to use it. And that's the way this bill is. But I'd like to move this bill as substitute. I'm going to have a motion and a second. All in favor of the bill as substituted, please say aye. Opposed, no. Need a machine vote. Madam Clerk, please close the machine and tally the vote. I have 29 yes, 6 no's, 2 abstentions. Motion passes. We're now at BL 2014-776, amends the Metro Zoning Code to create the Music City Cultural Heritage Overlay District to 16.06 acres for property located on Broadway, 2nd Avenue North, 
and Printers Alley. Council Member Gilmore. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports. Council Member Hunt. 776. Okay. Planning Historic approved. This bill is 840 against. Is that right? To yes. To defer. To, to defer. Yes. Council Member Gilmore. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'd like to move um, to defer indefinitely with a brief explanation. We have a motion and a second. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to thank Mr. Cooper for his time for working with, with me on this bill. Um, also, the Convention Visitors Bureau, as well as the Chamber of Commerce, and um, also my council members in the shared vision of Nashville and the brand and realizing how important that is. But I do realize that the historical bill will seek to uh, lead us to those um, ends that we want to meet. So with that, I renew my motion. I just wanted to thank everyone for their time. Um, All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-808 cancels 0.38 acres from OR20, RM20, and OR20A to MULA zoning for properties located at 813 and 816B. 19th Avenue North and at 19th Avenue North unnumbered at the intersection of Herman Street and 19th Avenue North. Council Member Langston. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Committee report. Council Member Hunt. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, and historic approved 840 against. Council Member Langster. Move for approval, please. Have a motion Back. and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-821 changes 2.66 acres from CS to SP zoning for properties located at 3029 and 3035 Brick Church Pike to permit heavy equipment sales and service. Councilmember Harrison. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I move for approval. I need a quick report from Councilman Hunt. Planning zone historic approved. This bill 840 against. Thank you, Councilman Harris. Now I move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 824 designates Old Clarksville Pike between Whites Creek Pike and Eaton's Creek Road as Keaton's Cut Place. Councilmember Garrett. Thank you, Madam uh, Vice Mayor. I would yield to Councilman Matthews, please. Councilmember Matthews. Thank you, Councilman Garrett. I'd just like to move approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 826 abandons a portion of the right of way for alley number 1999. Councilmember Westerholm. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. They're all in. They are in. Uh, with that, I'll move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 832 changes 0.1 acres from OR20 to MUNA zoning for property located at 1128 3rd Avenue South. Councilmember Moore. Committee reports, please. Councilmember Hunt. <coughs> Planning zone and historical voted 840 against to approve. Thank you, Councilmember Moore. I move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 834 changes 1.74 acres from R15 to SP zoning for property located at. <coughs> 7347 Charlotte Pike to permit an office and retail development. Council Member Weiner. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. Planning, zoning, and historical voted 8 4 0 against. Council approval. Member Weiner. I move approval, please. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 836 changes 3.74 acres from RS 7.5 to SP zoning for property located at Ewing Drive, unnumbered at the northwest corner of Ewing Drive and Gwynwood Drive to permit up to 28 residential units. Councilmember Harrison. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report, please. Councilmember Hunt. 
Plan and Zoning and Historical Approved Bill 836-840 against. Council Member Harrison. I move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-837 changes 0.59 acres from SP to SP zoning for property located at 942 Riverside Drive to permit up to 11 dwelling units. Council Member Westerholm. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Committee reports. Council Member Hunt. Planning and zoning and historical approval bill 836-840 against. Thank you, Council Member Westerholm. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. I'd like to move to suspend the rules in order to bring up an amendment. Um, is there, what is the reason for the suspension? The reason for the suspension is a series of conversations that were delayed. Uh, it's merely to deal with some landscaping issues with uh, the property and the surrounding area and, an, and uh, an opportunity to try to maintain consistent rhythm of Yoshino cherry trees along the Riverside Drive area. Is there any objection to a suspension of the rules? Seeing none, Councilman Westerholm. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, I move to adopt Amendment 1. Second. We have a motion and a second. Yes, Does everyone have that in front of them? Okay. okay. All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The amendment passes. I'd like to move the bill as amended with a brief explanation. Second. Have a motion and a second. Councilman Westerholm. Uh, thank you. I'd like to. Just to give a, a brief overview, and I appreciate the support for this amendment, uh, we're in the process of, of planting a number of Yoshino cherry trees along Riverside Drive. If you've not been down Riverside Drive in a while, it's going to be looking even better come spring when they're all in bloom. But this is a, a development, as you can see, it's merely changing from 11, uh, it's putting in 11 units. This is an SP that was previously existing. Uh, there is a, this is a new SP that updates what was previously done. Uh, there have been public meetings. Uh, there has been input provided for this to make the plan better. And I believe that this plan does represent uh, an an appropriate development along collector streets that does represent smart growth and I think that this is something that will benefit the entire area it does mean it does uh, it is consistent with the policy of this area and I think will be a proper addition to the community and with that I move approval all in favor of the bill as amended please say aye, aye. opposed no motion passes BL 2014-839 changes 1.16 acres from SP to DTC zoning for properties located at 201, 203, 205, 207, 209, 215, 217, and 221 Broadway and 109, 113, and 119 2nd Avenue South and at 110 and 116 3rd Avenue South. Council Member Gilmore. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Member Hunt. Planning, zoning, historical approved bill 839-840 against. Thank you, Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Council, Ms. Vice Mayor. I'm getting a little tired. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I want to move for approval with a brief explanation. We have a motion and a second, Council Member Gilmore. Thank you very much. I just actually once again wanted to thank planning for all of their hard work. There's a lot of zoning going on in this area, and they really work hard uh, for the citizens of Nashville, and I greatly appreciate it. I think people do not know how hard planning works for this city. So with that, I renew my motion to move. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-840 amends the Metro Code to prohibit beer permits from being issued for establishments located within a shopping mall containing a community center or a public library. Council Member Dow. Move for approval. Try again. Hello? Okay. I move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Sorry, Councilman Dominey. Vice Mayor, uh, we, uh, my last meeting it was announced that this bill would be deferred on third reading uh, to be allow discussion to take place between the council lady and the mall owners. While they may have had a discussion, there hasn't been an appropriate resolution yet. Uh, I would 
respectfully ask the council to defer, defer this bill as she had promised at our last meeting. Uh, th there's a number of issues that I have identified in Mr. Cooper. I'm going to ask a couple of questions just to clarify, make sure I'm on target with what I'm thinking. Based on our discussions, is, does this bill take a, pr a right away from the property owners of the mall? Well, to the extent you have a right to a beer permit, um, it, it would limit an applicant's ability to obtain a beer permit for a retail establishment, off-premises sales. Um, so if they are not within 100 feet of a school, church, playground, residence today, then they can um, seek to have a, a retail beer permit. And so this bill would, would not allow them to have a retail beer permit. Does this bill impact any other property except for the location of the former Hickory Hollow Mall and the Global Mall the crossings? Not to my knowledge. Um, in the event there's a beer permit issued on the property for an off-sale beer permit, does the beer permit have a responsibility under the law, the beer permit holder, to ensure that they're not consuming alcohol on the property? Uh, to ensure they're not consuming alcohol within the the premises on the premises within the store, yes. So if this if, if if they had a beer permit, they would be expressly prohibited by law from allowing people to consume alcohol on the premises. Yes, within the store. Yes. So so we're proposing to not let them have a beer permit. Now beer is for sale within a block of this property, at multiple st locations, convenience stores, Kroger. Uh, the proposal that brought this discussion about was a proposal to place a grocery store inside the mall. It's a grocery store that they sought to have a beer permit to be able to sell beer just like any other grocery store in the city would do. It's a matter of profit, it's a matter of their ability to ger generate revenue to allow them to be more successful. This bill expressly takes it away. And I respectfully ask that the council lady do as she had said she would do at the last meeting and defer this bill. Councilmember Holloman. Thank you, I just have a couple of questions. Um, I, as I understand what you just said about premises, when you say premises, you mean within the confines of the store itself, not within the mall. They have no obligation within the mall or within the city-owned community center. And frankly, they don't have any ability to enforce Correct. it. Right. So, so this regulation would, would, I guess, prevent that scenario from happening. Is that fair to say? in terms of beer sales that spilled out into the mall? Yes, from a retail establishment, yes. Inside the mall, yep. okay. And in terms of the right, would you agree it's fair to say that beer regulation is probably one of the areas of greatest discretion of, of all powers that we have delegated by the legislature in terms of the range of authority that we have over, over the permission or lack thereof of, of, of beer permitting? Yes, until that is taken away, that's, that's true. Okay. Yes. Yeah, well, for now, I should say. <laughs> Give them another session. Local control. Council Member Weiner. I have one question, John. If I went into Kroger or Mapco or any of the areas that are selling beer within the block of the facility, could I walk into the mall with it and would that be illegal? It, it would not be a violation of the Metro Code, but I mean the, the mall could prohibit alcohol on premises if, if it wanted to. But it currently does not. That, that I don't know. Okay, thank you. Council Member Dow. Thank you. I guess my. Okay, thank you. Um, I ask that you go ahead and move uh, this bill for approval. I've had an opportunity to sit down and meet with the uh, owners and talk about this legislation. Um, I actually met with them prior to because one of the discussions we've had ongoing is that because we have uh, a school there, a college, a community center, a park, and a recreation center, uh, which is all attached to each other, is um, um, looking at exceptions to variance every time someone wants to have a, a beer permit. And I think this legislation is fair. Um, the owner was in agreement with it. Um, he thought it was fair. It doesn't prohibit any restaurant from offering the sale of beer. It doesn't uh, prohibit you from going on site at the restaurant and drinking a beer. Um, the only thing it simply does is uh, regulate sales off premises. And uh, I don't know of any other place in the city or mall that um, provides for uh, beer sales. 
um, I will continue to work with the owners because it's not my desire to create any undue encumbrances upon them but what I think we can do is look at um, zoning uh, of the property is uh, the zoning is old but we can look at rezoning the property to accommodate multi uses to make sure that it doesn't adversely impact the other uses on the property and that's something that I am definitely willing to sit down with all the owners of the property and work out something because right now we don't have that but I do believe that this bill is in the best interest of the investment that the community has made on the property and to also keep the area um, safe and so that I ask that you support me and move this bill for approval. Councilmember Barry. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I did have one more question. I'm sorry. It, it follows to uh, Councilman Dominey's question. So if Kroger wanted to go in here, they would be prohibited from selling beer. Is that correct? Correct. If they wanted to go in within the mall facility itself. Would this also apply to the Bellevue Mall, the way this is written? So if the Bellevue Mall wanted to have some kind of retail that had some kind of, of sales, either beer only if they also had a park, community center, or library within the mall. Okay, so that's the, the end. When we have wine in grocery stores, does this apply as well, or is this uh, just Wine beer? is regulated by state law. Got it. Thank you. Councilmember Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I wanted to uh, ask for a, 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 a question. I wanted to clarify. Did um, Councilmember Dominey move to defer? No. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Councilmember Claiborne. Call for the question, please. And all in favor of previous question, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. no. Previous question passes. Um, we're back on the motion to approve uh, 2014-840. And we need a machine vote. Madam Clerk, please close the machine and tally the vote. I have 24 yes, 7 no, 5 abstentions. Motion passes. We're now at BL 2014-842, abandons retained easement rights in a portion of the former right-of-way of 50th Avenue North for property located at 4915 Illinois Avenue. Councilmember Baker. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-843 abandons 200 linear feet of existing 8-inch sewer main and accepts 16 linear feet of 8-inch public sewer main for property located at 440 Hogan Road. Council Member Harmon. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would move approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-844 abandons 525 linear feet of existing 8-inch public water main, 375 linear feet of 8-inch public water main, and accepts 1,263 linear feet of 10-inch water main, 355 linear feet of 8-inch water main with seven fire hydrant assemblies, 1,438 linear feet of 8-inch sewer main, and easements of various properties located south of Charlotte Avenue. Councilmember Langster. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Um, do I have a committee report left? Nope, they're all in. Oh, thank you. Move for approval then. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 845 authorizes the Department of Water and Sewage Services to enter into a participation agreement with Old South to fund a portion of the operation and maintenance of a public pressure sewer extension for the Harvest Grove Phase 2 development. Councilmember Duvall. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I would uh, like to ask for approval with a brief explanation. Have a motion and a second, Councilman. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I uh, just wanted to let everybody know that this is still cleanup from when we had all of these uh, bankrupt subdivisions in District 33. This is just another uh, housekeeping issue that uh, helps us uh, recover from, from all the bankruptcies. Uh, it's a good bill, and I really appreciate uh, folks working with Old South to make this happen. 
uh, renew my motion to approve. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Councilmember Bennett, you wish to be recognized. Yes, ma'am. I would like to congratulate Councilmember Doug Pardue and Precinct Commander Marlene Pardue for becoming grandparents. Yay. <laughs> would anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? All in favor, please say aye. aye. One direction.